Let us try to solve the exercise number two in the part A of our programming class. In this exercise, we are supposed to write a R program to find the roots of a quadratic equation using user defined function. Then we are supposed to test the program using user supplied values for all the possible cases. So I'm going to start uh, the R Studio. They have uh, already started the R program with me. And what they have said is uh, we are supposed to write the user-defined function. So let me write the user-defined function. I'm going to go and uh, start the user-defined uh, function over here. Let me go here and let me try to do that thing. Okay. So let's start uh, with the, the function. Let me see whether you can see it or not. So I'm going to just uh, zoom in for you. Okay. So let me call this function as quad. You can write a very lengthy name, but I'm going to keep the names shorter because during the examination, you can type it faster. So I'm going to say function. And it is supposed to take the values of A, B, and C. Now, what is this A, B, C that I'm taking? You are already familiar with the quadratic equation. Quadratic equation is um, uh, ax square plus, okay, plus bx plus c. So these are the three coefficients that I am taking, a, b, and c. Three coefficients I am taking. And so these three values we are supposed to supply it to the function. So this is your user-defined function. And let us look at um, the discriminant. And you know very well discriminant, if you look at the quadratic equation, we are trying to find the roots of the quadratic equation. What is the meaning of saying root of the quadratic equation? Is um, the place where the curve will meet the x-axis. So what is the value of the x? for which y turns to be 0. So y is 0 here, then y becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. So when y is equal to 0, the curve will touch the x-axis at two different places. And we are supposed to find the two places. This is the real case. What about the other cases? The curve may just touch the x-axis at exactly at one point. In that case, uh, the two roots r1 will be equal to r2. The next possibility is the curve may not touch the x-axis at all. In this case, we don't have the real solution. So this is considered to be an imaginary solution wherein uh, it will touch the x-axis at that uh, imaginary point. So we are supposed to find that thing. So how can I say when the curve will touch the x-axis or not? There are three possibilities are there. Either uh, the curve will touch the x-axis at two places, that is uh, two distinct places like this or the curve will touch the x-axis at exactly one places or the curve may not touch the x-axis at all. These three are determined by something called as a discriminant. So we are going to call a discriminant okay? and this discriminant will decide whether the curve will touch the x-axis or not. How can I find the discriminant? And I, again, I will not go in depth into this uh, particular thing because you have studied this in your uh, first uh, semester itself. So let's go ahead and let's uh, try to calculate the discriminant. Discriminant is b square. So how do you write b square? b square minus 4ac, 4 into a into c. So this is a discriminant. So if the discriminant is positive, the curve will touch the x-axis at two different places. So if the discriminant is positive, the curve will touch the x-axis at two different places. If the discriminant is zero, something else will happen. So let me first go with the first solution. If this discriminant, whatever you have calculated, if it is greater than zero, that means it is a positive discriminant. 
then the curve will touch the x-axis at two different places so let us try to find the two distinct root so what is the meaning of this is i'm saying that this curve will touch the x-axis at two different places and i am supposed to find the value of uh, these two uh, values at which uh, the <coughs> curve will touch the x-axis so that is the thing that i am interested in so how do you get that thing so to find the root again you are supposed to say minus v plus square root of discriminant so press the square root of this square root of discriminant so minus v square root of the discriminant divided by 2 into a so this is what is the first root so this is going to give me the first root that is minus v plus square root of the discriminant divided by 2a in the same way i can get the next value by simply copy pasting it and i will get the second root value that is r2 i can get the r2 by saying minus v minus only thing difference is minus d by 2a so these are the two values so two things so this is plus or in other words minus v plus or minus square root term of uh, discriminant by 2a so this is uh, one time it is plus the second time it is uh, minus and i'm going to use the cat function here so just to tell you that um, and i will use a line space here and i'm going to say a real uh, roots r because there are uh, two roots are there so i'm going to say first one is uh, r1 and uh, let me just say and i'm going to put one space and then type a and d and i'm going to put one more space otherwise they will touch each other and come so you will get uh, the if you don't put the spaces uh, the values will touch one another and come so this is the next case so let me go ahead and uh, let me go to the next option and what is the next option if the root is positive well then good else if if uh, the discriminant is uh, exactly equal to zero then what is that we are supposed to do if the discriminant is exactly equal to zero that means to say that what is the meaning of this is uh, if the discriminant is positive the curve will touch at two different places if the discriminant is zero the curve will touch the x-axis only at one place that is the meaning of it the curve will touch the x-axis only at one place so there will be only one a real root so i'm going to just call it as r you can call it as r1 also so what is this r1 r1 is remember discriminant is zero this part d is zero so if you remove this part because the square root of zero is zero itself you get minus v by 2a so this is what you are going to get so you are going to get minus v by just take it here uh, 2 into a so this will be the Sorry, I am used to that putting a semicolon there. So this is what is your, uh, what is that, uh, a root, and I will just uh, copy paste it to uh, into the uh, page. So I'm going to just say that uh, roots are equal. Instead of saying uh, roots, I'm going to just say roots are equal. And uh, or there is one uh, you can also say unique roots other way other one other way of saying it is uh, there is only one unique root you can say anything and so this is the second option the last option is uh, remember uh, the there are three possible values you can have for d either d is positive that you have taken there either d is zero or either d is negative so either it will be a positive value or it is zero or it is a negative so i'm going to now say that what will happen if it is um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what if uh, it is uh, a negative? So let's uh, go ahead with the what if uh, it is a negative. So if it is a negative, I will calculate the real part and uh, the imaginary part. You know very well if uh, this, if it is not touching the x-axis, that means to say that uh, it will not touch. Uh, there is no real rules for it. 
you get the imaginary root. So I'm going to calculate both the real and imaginary part separately. So how do you calculate the real part? Remember, b by 2a, b by 2a is the real part. Square root of this one will be the, by 2a will be the imaginary part. So I'm going to calculate the real part is uh, nothing but minus b by 2 into a. So this is the real part. Let me just say ing, imaginary part. Imaginary part is sqrt square root of, remember d is already negative. So I'm going to say minus of minus, minus d. Why did I say minus d is because d is negative. There is no value defined for negative square root is not defined. So I will say it is minus d. So because d is already negative, minus of minus will be positive. So d is value is already negative, like d is minus y. Minus of minus y will be positive plus y. So that is why I am taking it as a minus d divided by 2 into a. So this is not 9, sorry. This is 2 into 2 into a. Done. <clears throat> so I have the real part. I have the uh, imaginary part. Let me create a, the two complex number. How do you create a complex number? You know very well. To create a complex number, you just say complex. And then you create uh, the real part. You can use control space. The real part is this. Real part is uh, R. And the imaginary part, imaginary part is uh, IMG. So this is uh, one you have done. So minus uh, uh, this one. And next time uh, it is the same thing. I'm going to just copy it. Control C and uh, control v the only difference this is c2 this will be minus imaginary so what is this one you know very well you are saying minus v plus or minus plus or minus so this is what um, i'm trying to say this is plus or minus so these two things are taken care either this is plus okay, or this will be minus imaginary part so that is the only thing i'm showing over here and um, I'm going to just to say, I will copy it uh, from here as well, control C, control C and control V. Uh, instead of saying the real root, I'm going to say complex uh, roots R. This time it is C1, this is the C1, and this will be C2. The second one will be C2. So that is all that needs to be done. I'm going just to remove the unnecessary uh, spaces that uh, I have put here. So just to move this one space also. So this will create uh, my function. So this function is created. And now let me ask uh, the next thing that they have said is um, test the program using user supplied values for all possible cases. So I'm going to test the values by asking the value from the user. So I'm going to say, uh, tell the user, give me the value of um, A, give me the value of B, and give me the value of the C. And for that, I'm going to use the read line function because the read line is going to give me a text value. I'm going to convert it into numeric. So I'm going to say as numeric because I'm converting it into a numerical value. Then I'm going to say a read line. Then I'm going to ask the user, enter the value of A. So enter the value of A. So value of A. So I'm asking the user, give me the value of A and i'm converting it into numeric value and then i'm storing it into a in the same way i'm going to use control c and control v and uh, let me do the same thing control c control v and uh, let me go here and uh, to this uh, this is the first uh, machine that i've chosen to in the video in any case, so I have the value of A and I have the value of B and I have the value of C. I'm just asking the user give me the value of A, B, C. So the whatever value user is giving, I'm storing it in the A. Whatever value user is giving for the B, I'm storing it in B. Whatever the value the user is giving, I'm storing it in C. And I have already created this function. What is the name of my function? Is quad. I have used the name quad for my function. So I'm going to call this function quad and I'm supposed to supply the values for a, b and c. You can give any different variable x, y, z, whatever it is, but uh, I will prefer a, b, c. 
So I'm going to call this function q u a d quad, and I'm going to supply the values a comma b comma c. So these are I'm calling this quad when I double click on it, it must come here. So quad, I'm calling this quad function. So if everything is proper, it should run. So I'm going to just um, run it properly. So let me just click here and hope I've not done any mistake. Let me run it. So you get the thing over here. Let me just show you this. Uh, enter the value of uh, A. So I'm going to say one and uh, enter the value of B, two and enter the value of C. And uh, you get uh, minus one pi for one and something like that. And you get uh, the value. So this is a complex root. One to one is a complex, uh, uh, what did I type? One, two, three, it is a, complex uh, route. Let me run it. I think I should have used one to one. Let me just see. Uh, uh, let me just go with the one, two, two, let's just say. So this is complex. One, two, two is also complex. I think one, two, one, two, one. Let's say, let me try it one, two, one. Just, uh, just give me, uh, just forgot this one. One, so one, two, one. Let me just try one, two, one. So roots are equal. One, two, one. Yes, so roots are equal. So one, two, one. Roots are equal. So I got roots are equal. And the previous case, I got the complex root for uh, one, two, two. So one, two, two is uh, uh, what is this? One, two, two is. Uh, the roots are uh, complex. Next one is the uh, roots are equal. And I think uh, I have to get uh, the last one. I think uh, this one will be one, three, one. Let's just, just, just check uh, one. I think I might not click here. Just click here. Otherwise, it will just take you there. One, three, one. Okay, so these are the two real rules. So the three values that uh, I've used, uh, generally I use these uh, values. One is, um, is this so one? Uh, what I've used is one, three, one. So this is going to give me the two distinct values. So that is uh, two distinct value when the, the roots are uh, there are two distinct roots R1 and R2. This is the one that I'm getting R1 and R2. Then I have used. Um, this one one two one so when i used um, one two one so i am getting only one value so there is this uh, one value uh, so let's see. One, one two one okay. roots are equal and this is the value i'm getting roots are equal so i get only one what is the meaning of it is uh, so this uh, uh, is going to touch the x-axis only at one point this is the one and the last one that um, I am uh, generally using is one to one. One to one. So let's uh, just type that thing for you. One to one. So this is the value. So when you are using it, you are going to get um, you know, where is the one to one. So one to one is also the circle. Where is the other one? One two three. I think. Now then uh, let's go with the one two three. So one two three. You are going to get the value as a complex number. Why it is a complex number? You know very well. A complex number is written as x plus i y. Hope you are familiar. X plus x. Where is the x? Plus i y. Generally, you type like this, but uh, people write y i. So you see this uh, imaginary term here. So that is the imaginary term that is uh, coming using the complex uh, numbers so that's all in this uh, uh, class so thank you for your interest we will meet again in the other session thank you